In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create an image classifier without writing a single line of code. We're gonna create a tool that can take an image of a dog and predict the breed of that dog based on that image. So we're gonna create some training data, we're gonna run the model, perform the training, and then we'll do some predictions on some images that the model has never seen before and get a feel for how accurate the model is. Let's get started. So the first thing we wanna do is source the training data. So we need to somehow um, download enough images to be able to train this model. For Google's AutoML, I believe each class needs to have at least 100 images. Um, if you're actually building a classifier for a production application, you know, really more data is better. So I would suggest you know, shooting for you know, probably 1,000 images for each class. Um, but for the sake of example here, we're just going to do you know, a little bit over 100. So getting images is a little difficult. Uh, Flickr has an API that um, is public and you can use, and those images are commercially available, and they have um, you know, various licensing rights. But for the sake of this example here, we're just going to scrape some images from Google search. And the way we do that is by using a Chrome extension. So I'm just going to search for um, batch image download Chrome extension. Actually, this is the one I like. So Wayxia, that's the one I like. So I'm going to add this to Chrome. OK, it's been added. So let's actually start looking for the breeds of dogs that we want. So I'm going to look for Dalmatian. This will be one of the breeds. I'm going to toggle over to images. I'm going to scroll down so these become lazy loaded. And then what you do is you select the Chrome extension and you do dig images. And so we're going to do select all, but we're going to put some parameters in place because like it's going to grab every image on the page and some of these images we don't want, like for instance, these first two images. So we're going to say that the width must be greater than 160 and the height must be greater than 190. It really doesn't matter, but we want those small icons to be eliminated. And then we're just going to kind of visually curate our list here. Like for instance, this image is not going to help us. Um, it's okay if there's some noise in the Im like some images that aren't helpful, that's okay. But we want it to be as accurate as we can. Like this is a doll, so that's not good. So we're going to download these images. We're going to do create new site folder and save. And we'll call this Dalmatian. I spelled Dalmatian wrong. That's OK. And then we're going to go show in Finder. So the way this works is the Chrome extension Wayxia will create a directory and then it will create a subdirectory with the label. It'll create a subdirectory with the label um, that we just created here. And then within that directory, I think it uses the date to create another directory, but we actually don't want to do that. So um, let's actually pull these images and just put them into this directory right here because we don't need an additional subdirectory. Because what's going to happen is when we upload this to AutoML, you upload it as a directory hierarchy where each subdirectory, the name of the subdirectory serves as the label for the images contained within that subdirectory. So it's going to iterate over the uh, subdirectories and it's going to use that name as the label. So we have Dalmatian. That should be sufficient. So let's do another breed now. Let's do German Shepherd. So one thing to note about these image classifiers that Google has kind of made a point to, um, to bring to people's attention is that 
the classifier is only as good as the data you feed it. So if you're, if you're feeding it data that is kind of like biased or limited in um, scope in any way, well then the model is going to is, is going to reflect that. And you know one example is if you think about something like um, you know a wedding, for instance, you know a, a wedding, you know in America we think of a wedding as you know something like this and you know this is very typical but if you search like Indian wedding you know if the models not trained on a diverse set of data the results are going to be biased so it might see something like this and classify this as something like performing arts or you know so it would misclassify something like this if it wasn't trained on a diverse set of data. But this is as much a wedding as, you know, what I previously showed you. So, you know, it's just something to keep in mind uh, with, with the data sets. I don't think it, it's pertinent to our problem here. But, you know, when you're training these image classifiers, that is something to think about. Anyways, okay, so, um, so we're getting some pug data here. Let's go ahead and dig this. dig images okay so now we just want to change the structure of the folders real quick so if we go to download all right so way ixia this is the master folder here we want the images for each class to be uh, direct descendants of each directory so and that's just not the way that the Chrome extension works so like for instance if we go to pug it creates one more subdirectory, but we don't need that. So let's go ahead and move these images to the parent directory. So I'm just going to take these and just move them into pug. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete that. All right, so we're good with pug. We already did that with Dalmatian, and we just need to do that with German Shepherd. Okay, let's get rid of this stuff. Okay. All right, so we're all set now. We have one folder that has our classes and each, uh, each class has the training data within that directory. So let's just leave that for now and let's go into Google Cloud Platform to start training the model. Okay, so once we're in Google Cloud Platform, we are gonna open the navigator here and Let's see. We want vision. And so there's auto ML vision. And we want image classification. Okay, so you have to set this up. Um, I'm going to select my project here. Okay, looks like we're set up now. And so, all right, so th there's two primary views here. One is your models, which you've already created. These are the machine learning models, and they'll get stored here. And then your data sets. So let's go ahead and create a new data set. Dog hyphen breed. Sorry, dog underscore breed. All right, so there's different ways to get the data in. So you can upload to cloud storage, um, or you could upload a zip, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Note, each label should have at least 100 images for best results. Okay, so it won't work if there's less than 100. So let's go back to our folder here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this folder and we're going to compress it, zip it. wayxia2.zip and then we should be able to just select that okay enable multi 
label classification, classification. If you have images that may require multiple labels, enable this setting now. So we don't in this case. Um, each, each dog should get one class. So we'll leave that unchecked for now. OK, so our image is just loaded in. So we do want to take a quick look at the summary stats here and make sure everything looks good. So you can see here everything has a label. Um, each category has over 100 images, which is what we want. And you can even um, further curate these lists if you want. Like for instance, this is probably not, probably not very helpful. So let's see here. So what you can do is, oh, that's odd. You can either change the label or you can just delete it outright. So maybe I go ahead and delete that image. Um, so let's go over to train. And we're going to do start training. So if you're going to be deploying your model at the edge, for instance, like an IoT or a mobile device, you would select this and it'll actually give you uh, the model file. We're going to do cloud-based. So we want to export to essentially an API that a web-based app could in interface with. For training budget, let's just do one. Okay, so yeah, we don't have enough images to, to do more. So, so that all looks good. Let's, gonna get, let's go ahead and do start training. So this, I believe, will take somewhere between like a half hour and an hour. Okay, so it looks like our training is done. Precision seems really high, so that's cool. Let's go to see full evaluation. And this will just give you a bunch of summary stats about the model and um, you know what features are important and things like that. But let's go ahead to predict. All right, so there's different ways to interface with your model. There's a standard REST API call where you post this JSON payload. They also give you a Python script. So um, you can interface with your model using Python. And this is pre-built. And I've, I've tried this. It works perfectly. Um, but without getting into coding, as promised, uh, we'll, we'll just go ahead and upload an image from the UI here and then run a prediction. So we want to get an image that it hasn't seen before. So I'm going to search Dalmatian Texas, just some sort of unique keyword, and go to images. All right, let's grab this here. And we're going to do save image as Dalmatian test prediction. OK, and then let's go back to Google Cloud. And we'll run a prediction on that new image. So had no trouble with that image. Um, so that's that looks good, very accurate. And let's try let's try one of the pug images. This is not the best quality image, but I think it'll be fine. Okay, had no trouble. So as you can see, with our limited data, and our data was very shoddy in many ways, the model is incredibly accurate. And I don't know exactly how they do this, but I know that you know prior to AutoML, the way you would do something like this, the way I would do something like this, is to use the Inception V3 model, which is the Google object, like generic object classification model, and then do transfer learning to, to train that final layer and you end up with a, a very similar output, um, a very accurate model that's able to classify images. So I wouldn't be surprised if something like that is going on under the hood here. But, you know, it's very accurate. 
uh, it's super easy to spin up these models. And, you know, this is just a really, really powerful capability, new capability that you could bring to your applications because now you have this REST API that's able to take in an image and uh, run the machine learning inference and output uh, uh, that um, that prediction, that classification against that data, and bring you know these rich, complex features to to applications. And when you do that, you know that's going to improve the the quality and the the value of your application. So this is a really this is a really important kind of stepping stone, I think, for um, for development in general and and machine learning in, in general. And the you know the overhead and the costs associated with generating these models is just um, it, it's it's so reduced uh, by the advent of auto ml so you know it's a really cool time to be uh, playing in the space anyways that's all i have for this tutorial thanks for listening